again. So in this video, we're going to take our experiment one step further, but also it won't be quite as concrete because now we're using a computer simulation instead of physically drawing, you know, from the actual bucket. But think of that as this is what we're doing. Um, we just have, uh, we have the entire population in our bucket. Um, when you click on the link to get to the simulation, you'll see the instruction page. So we just click on begin. And here we see our population. So what we want to do is start with a skewed population, just like we had with the number of piercings. That was a skewed population. So pretend this is the number of piercings. These numbers won't, won't match our distribution that we had in the bucket, but we're, we're trying to get an idea of the shape here. Okay, so then what we can do is let's start with a sample size of five because that's what we ended up with and um, you want to just keep the settings here, mean and five, okay? So click on animated and it's doing what I was just doing. So it's drawing five random, uh, five random people surveying how many piercings or how many whatever do you have and then it's taking the average and putting it right there, okay? And this is, so this is our sample window and this is our distribution of means. So I'm gonna do another one um, clicking on animated and you can see we're more likely to get these lower values because the frequency is higher but we still might get an occasional one over here okay I'm gonna do a few of these animated it's just fun to watch and See if you can predict what's going to happen. Okay, now you might get tired of doing that, so you can do five at a time. Or you can do 10,000 at a time. That would take all day with the green bucket. Or you can do 100,000 at a time. And you can kind of see how many repetitions you have over here. So you can keep going until this shape stops changing and then you know you've really, you've got the, the long run behavior. You've got the distribution of all the possible random samples. Okay, so it's really not changing anymore. Okay, so that's kind of what I expected. Um, we, it was getting a little less skewed. It was getting more symmetric in our experiment, but see how it's still a little skewed right there? but also the range is much smaller than the original one. Now, this gives us the medians. It gives us mean, median, and um, we're not gonna worry about skew and kurtosis. It gives us the mean, median, and standard deviation. So notice how the mean is 8.08 .08 in the population and also 8.08 .08 in, um, in the distribution of the random sample. So the mean stayed the same. Um, the standard deviation has gotten a lot lower from 6.22 to 2.78. Okay, so now let's increase even higher. I'm gonna keep this mean and five right there, and I'm gonna change this lower one to mean and 25, okay? So now when I click on animate it, it's gonna do a five and put it there. Then it's gonna do a 25, which would take, it would be our whole population in the bucket, but it's gonna take a little time. Um, but notice how the sample looks like the population. It's pretty representative, it's skewed. And then here's our average. So I'll do one more of those. So those, that was the five, here's the 25. And then it's gonna drop down our average. Cool, huh? Okay, so that's gonna take a while. So I'm gonna fill in with 10,000 and then 100,000. <clears> wow, is that surprising? It now looks completely symmetric. So we started with a um, skewed distribution and with only a sample size of 25, that's really not that big, right? If you survey someone, you would expect to survey way more than 25 people. But even at just 25, this looks pretty normal. There's a little check button that says fit normal. So you can see it's pretty close. Where this one is not, not that normal yet. Let's look at our statistics. So the mean, again, is also 8.08. .08. Um, if you're doing yours, they'll be might be slightly different. Um, and just because of the randomness. Um, and then the standard deviation is now 1.24. So it went from 6.22 
to 2.78 to 1.24. So it seems like the bigger our sample size is, this, the more we average, the narrower our distribution is going to be. Okay? Wow, that's really weird that that came out to a normal distribution. Let's start with, instead of skewed, let's do uniform. Okay? Uniform means the same throughout, so every value has essentially the same frequency or the same probability. I'm going to keep the 5 and the 25. I'll do some 5s first, and now I'm just doing the 10,000s and the 100,000s. Wow, so this came out pretty normal right away, even with 5. That's because it's symmetric. And then also, so the 25 also looks normal. So um, let's double check our means. The, this little red bar, I think, is the standard deviation, and this line is the mean. So the means look really close, don't they? Um, 16, 16.01, and 16. And the standard deviation went from 9.52 to 4.26 to 1.91. Wow, so again, we got a normal distribution. Another fun thing you can do with this is a custom distribution. So here's one I like. It's called a bathtub distribution, bathtub curve, where um, human life and just parts, they tend to be uh, more likely to fail uh, or die at the beginning of life. Then it's fairly stable for a while, and then more likely to end uh, at the end, fail at the end. So that's called a bathtub curve. So let's try this one. Surely that can't come out normal, can it? What? OK, so a little uh, funkiness in the sample size of 5. That's a very small sample size. It's not really not looking too normal, but it's fairly symmetric. But look at by with only a sample size of 25, it looks pretty normal. Again, we see the same thing with the means. Um, the mean is this blue one here, actually. Um, it's just that they're overlapping with the red. I, I get the color coding now. Um, so the mean was 16.97, 16.97, 16.97. Standard deviation went from 11.27 to 5.04 to 2.25. Okay, so really, um, it seems like it doesn't matter what our original distribution is. You can also, uh, let's, let's clear this for a second. You can also do kind of make kind of like a skyscraper. I'm just dragging my mouse to make this distribution. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I've got kind of like a city, this is not a statistical distribution, but it looks kind of like a cityscape, like a downtown skyscrapers. So let's try this one. I challenge you to find one that does not come out normal after uh, in, in the 25 area after you get to a steady state here. Okay, it's not changing anymore. So this one was even a little better than the bathtub um, because there's, there's a little more in the center to draw from. And it looks fairly normal even at 25. So our means, again, are the same. So the mean doesn't seem to change. It's just that when you take averages, it pulls everything towards that mean. Okay, standard deviation gets smaller. Now, let's try one more thing. You might be wondering, well, what if you start with a normal distribution? I'm only going to do the 5 here to start with. OK, does it kind of make sense that if you start with a normal distribution, your samples, even if you only do 5, is still normal? Um, this does give me a chance to do 2, so let's do that. Yeah, so even with two, if your population is normal, your samples, your, the distribution of your random samples will be normal. So we don't really have a sample size requirement on that one. And then, of course, anything higher is definitely going to be normal. But let's look what happens to the mean. 
I'll change this back to five. So what happens is the standard deviation changes. So when we average, the more, uh, we, the more values we average together, the narrower the distribution gets. In this case, our standard deviation went from five to 2.24 down to one, okay? And the means stayed the same. Okay, so thanks for playing along with this experiment. I hope you tried this out yourself or feel free to play around with it. And I will summarize this on the notes in our next video, okay? So I'll see you there.